guys, I'm here feeding little blue, got some chopped pinkies, and as I was chopping up these pinkies, started thinking about uh, something that's come up a bunch of times recently for me. Um, so today's video, I'll just be feeding the lizard, the monitor here, and uh, talking about how we treat our feeders. You know, specifically our rodents, but whatever you may be raising for your for your reptiles to eat. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this super well or not. I'll try and get him to come out in the open where the camera can see him. Um, come here, bud. It's over here. Now he smells it. Tongue's coming out. He's getting shy. Cut my tongues a little bit. So, um, we raise mice and rabbits, and lots of people raise rats, uh, and they are just feeder animals. You know, their their whole purpose is to feed your reptiles and have a, a healthy food source for them, right? But they are live animals, and most people in the reptile hobby have a great respect for all live animals. Um, However, not everybody. <laughs> we have talked to people who um, have told us just horror stories. Apparently, <clears throat> there's a guy up here who was, uh, he runs a pet store, and he found out that some of the customers buying uh, live rats from him for their snakes were ripping the rats' incisors out with pliers uh, <laughs> so that the rat couldn't bite the snake, right? That is absolutely awful. Um, somebody who is willing to do that to a live animal, in my opinion, should not be allowed to keep live animals. I mean, that's just, to me, that's pretty basic. That's a, a horrible, painful, terrifying act to inflict on anything. We should never be allowed to do that. I would, personally, I'm not even okay with ripping legs off of insects. Uh, but but as far as rodents go, uh, very advanced species like that, uh, that's just, that's terrible. So I was thinking about that. We, we feed our rodents 100% um, of their diet is Missouri 6F, which is a specialized rodent feed. Um, I've heard of people who mix their own rodent feed and stuff, and that's totally fine as long as they do it right. Um, our rodents are cleaned like deep cleaned twice a week so they're never sitting in you know filth or anything like that um, any sick ones are humanely euthanized uh, the way we euthanize is with cervical dislocation we we break their necks and you know we've had people look at us when I tell them that's how we kill our rodents and they're horrified They're like, oh why don't you why don't you just drown them or something and I'm like well because that is actually horrible <laughs> You know, it's a much more painful and terrifying way to go. These rodents, they never see it coming. I mean, we handle them so much because of the cage cleaning that when we pick them up and we're going to break their neck, they don't even know it's coming. They're not afraid. There's no pain because it's so quick. It's, to my mind, the most humane way to euthanize a rodent. Absolutely, is breaking their neck. Obviously, uh, CO2 is another way that's widely accepted as humane, which I agree with. Um, it's probably a little bit more frightening maybe because you know they're kind of suffocating but again it's real quick you're not inflicting some sort of pain on them um, so however of those methods you choose especially if you're on a larger scale co2 makes a lot more sense than uh, you know cervical dislocation but you know we only have our, our rodent tree numbers in the hundreds we we can afford to just um, break their necks if necessary oh he's turning around he does not like me talking like this <laughs> and there's two of us in here because Liz is filming so he's being pretty shy with his feeding today he took I don't know three pieces maybe so I'm just gonna hide the rest of the pieces around his enclosure give him a little bit of uh, 
fun tracking them all down. I'll put most of them up top there out of the main heat source. I don't want them starting to rot before he gets to them. But uh, yeah, so that's just what I've been thinking about today is treat your rodents well, people. <laughs> most, almost everyone in the reptile hobby does. I mean, this is the food source for our precious reptile babies, so we're, we're taking good care of them. But uh, in case you've never thought about it before, I know sometimes people have actually thought doing something like drowning them or putting them straight in the freezer uh, alive is more humane than breaking their necks. Because the idea of taking the little animal in your hand and actually breaking its neck is it's horrifying or something. So sometimes it's just, you know, people haven't thought it all the way through. And that's fine, but I'm just here to tell you, it's not humane to drown your rats. <laughs> it's just not. So find, um, you can build your own CO2 chamber for very inexpensive or um, just break their necks. That's, that's the easiest way that we have found to uh, euthanize our rats. Obviously, not every single snake will take frozen thawed. And I'm sure that the mouse feels some pain and some fear when it's being constricted. But that is an extremely fast... Um, most of our rodents are dead within 10 seconds from the time they get struck. So it's still quick. Um, it's efficient. All I can say is, um, please do not cause your rodents you know, pain and terror that could so easily be avoided. Um, they're an extremely important part of our hobby. We just we couldn't have the reptile hobby if we didn't have uh, you know feeder ro uh, rodents and insects and the other things that we feed them. But that being said, um, I personally don't think it's right to essentially be you know torturing the rats that we work with. It's just that's not okay. So anyway, sorry to rant at you guys like this. Uh, I'll get back to my feeding here, but uh, that's just what I've been thinking about. So uh, let me know uh, how you guys feel about this. I've seen some you know, pretty nasty arguments about this online before, so we don't, we don't need any of that. It's just, in my opinion, all animals deserve to be taken care of as well as we can, even the ones that are destined to become food. Um, I'm not saying that every single rat has to have its own little pillow and toys and everything, but... <laughs> They should at least be kept clean, have excellent feed and water, and die in a way that's not, uh, you know, inhumane. That's all I've got for you. And I know that there are people out there who are not reptile keepers who would say that feeding it live to an animal is inhumane. I disagree. That's how nature works. But, you know, the, the snake is not ripping out the rat's incisors while it's still alive. You know, there, there's some differences there. Anyway, that's all I've got for you, so thank you for watching. We've got some exciting things coming up soon. Uh, and until next time, we're the Reptile Barn.